Lena, welcome. Thank you. I'm back. You're back. <laughs> and talk to us about this Obsessed series. We have so much to discuss today. So very, very but much. We're yeah. looking at the album cover. So let's start with uh, Obsessed, Elton John. Yeah. Um, so uh, Obsessed is a series that I'm doing um, for the whole year. Uh, I'm doing an album at the beginning of every month and then a video that goes uh, to each song on the album. They're EPs. So it's four or five songs, depending on how long the month is. And then uh, and then we release you know, the video a week and... Uh, the next month it's on to the next artist. So we started with Hedwig and the Angry Inch because everybody uh, who's current, like or was already a fan of mine, knows me from Hedwig and wanted me to record those songs. And I needed a, a way to record them that wasn't like the sound, like mm -hmm. the soundtrack that we did for the for the uh, Broadway show. So I came up with this idea of doing them all stripped down, you know, um, using as, as little instrumentation as, as possible, and then also. Um, having these raw kind of performances happen. Uh, so all these songs, we did the whole series. We recorded it and filmed it in eight days. And wow, 12 uh, EPs. 12 EPs, 54 songs, because we did two extra for the opener of Hedwig. And, uh, and we did about three or four takes per song. So everything that you hear and see is pretty much live um, done Th right there. So uh, the idea was that I wanted to get back to what you know a live performance sounds like recorded, and I wanted to get away from any kind of overproduction on my voice or on on the tracks alone. Like I wanted to really like get these artists down to their you know bit parts and and uh, present these songs as stripped down as possible, so that you could really hear the basic parts of the song and. And, uh, and I, I'm excited. That's uh, basically each one of these artists is, they're all artists that inspire me, artists that have shaped me as a performer. And, um, and it's fun because it's like, it's like the game of like, oh, I'm your friend. And I'm like, you have to hear this artist. Oh my God, have you ever heard them? And then here are some of their really famous songs, which you probably already know. And then here's some really deep cuts that you don't know so that you'll like dive deeper into this artist's catalog. So that's the whole idea. Yeah, and with uh, the videos you're releasing, you also have a little one minute long video um, that explains why you love the artist and what you're intending to do with your song selection. Mm -hmm. And I love watching those as sort of an explanation of how and why you chose the, the artist to feature that you did. Yeah, yeah, they're little trailers. And then soon we're gonna um, release on Spotify uh, me doing commentary. On the, really? Yeah, on the songs, which is ridiculous. But I think <laughs> <laughs> because there's not enough content. Yeah, as if there's not enough content uh, happening, you know, the, there's also that. When to look did you to. record these uh, videos and songs? I recorded them in, let's see, September. Okay, so you're already a solid six months past I'm way, the recording. We're way ahead, um, yeah. Do you still feel like, like if you chose now, would you choose the same artists? Um, to start with, to open with, yes. And, and you know, we're, we're hopefully doing a season two and I can mm. get further into it. But really, honestly, I could do this for years. I could do this for years and years and years. And also it's great because it's only, it was such a small chunk of time that it took to really like get this out there, uh, done and out there. And uh, it was a challenge mm -hmm. to sing that much. I don't know, three, I guess three yeah. times 54. What is that? Anybody? 162. 160 something. 162. So essentially I sang each, like I sang a song. I sang 162 songs in eight days, yeah, which is insane. But um, and it re really pushed 20 myself. Twenty and a half a day. <laughs> yes, twenty and a half a day, and I really pushed myself to get not precious with it. So just to really listen to it, listen to the emotional value of the performances, and you know, did it come across? Did I do what I could with it? Do I love the performance as a whole instead of getting really like nitpicky with it? So, um, so we did that, and and uh, like the sky is the limit. There's so many artists, mm -hmm. so many artists, and now I'm getting requests. Oh, good. Requ yeah, requests, artist requests, and what you do with this artist. You're obsessed with. It does. It has to be something that. I am inspired by, or that I feel that I could do well. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll also, there, there are artists that I'm super inspired by, like Tribe Called Quest. Mm -hmm. And like, I, <laughs> I would not do well. <laughs> I would not do well rapping. I'm, no one wants to watch, hear me rap. I don't know. Like, I think there no, are people out there. Nobody wants, do. yeah, nobody wants that. But uh, <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? The, I'm afraid I'm going to butcher the lyric, but, there, but Ani DeFranco had this lyric where she said, uh, a record used to be, People used to make records as in the record of an event, the event of people making music in a room. Uh -huh. And I feel like that's what these records are. Yes, yeah, it, yes. It's, there's a rawness and 
uh, and I don't want to say imperfection because I, I love this element of it, mm -hmm. but the rawness really feels like we're there. It doesn't, it's, it's anti-autotune. Yeah, and, and I wanted people to get the sense of like, because I can't go everywhere and do shows for everyone, like uh, concerts all the time, like I can't do a concert tour tour, you know, I thought it was a great way to get into people's living rooms mm -hmm. and to make them feel like they're there, like they're they're close to me, like they, they can feel the performance coming from me so that it feels more like they're at a live performance. That was the whole, you know, that's the impetus of it mm -hmm. is, to, is to give people that kind of live show without, with me not being able to give them a live show, you know, as often as they would maybe want. So we've got Elton John, uh, you released Peter yeah. Gabriel. Oh, yeah. And the Hedwig, the Hedwig uh, EP. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard you mention Radiohead. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, and you actually did a concert of Radiohead songs with Michael C. Hall, one of your former wives from yes. one of your former co-stars in Hedwig. Um, and the one that I'm the most excited about that I've heard of is Pink. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I did who, Pink. What other artists have you covered for this series? Uh, we covered the Cranberries which uh, which was very sad, actually, because yeah. we had already filmed it. It's already there. We we actually were unsure whether we should release it or not. Mm -hmm. But um, but I yeah, I made sure that 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 it's it's very much of a ode to them or her, mm -hmm. like a, an ode to her. And and, and uh, tribute. And I, yeah, I wanted to make sure that it was, you know, really beautiful, um, especially since the tragic, her tragic death. I mean, um, and then what I've done, I did David Bowie, I did mm -hmm. Chris Cornell, I did Nirvana, a bunch of, I mean, like Beck. It, the, it's such, it's a huge range. And the idea is to take people out of their comfort zone. So maybe you're a fan of Elton John, but you don't know who Beck is. Mm -hmm. And so when Beck comes out, you'll be like, oh, Oh, this is interesting. You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of presenting music on the same plane, so that you can kind of jump and listen to something that maybe you wouldn't have originally listened to. And meanwhile, you're also doing the show at the Cafe Carlisle, which is strictly show tunes this time around. Strictly show tunes. This is your fourth Cafe Carlisle show. <laughs> I know. Which for this, this is an an iconic institution mm -hmm. and this is the first time you've done show tunes there this at is least the first, yes. an entire concert of show tunes no this is the first time i've done show tunes there you'd, you'd haven't done a single show tune not a single show tune Cause, i because i i well, was you like did the radio ad, show i was adamant about not doing show tunes at the cafe carlisle because that's what everyone expects uh -huh. and i was like i'm gonna give them sex pistols and rock and roll and uh -huh. like you know do all this stuff way outside the box and then and then because I have this Obsessed series coming out that really, like, it fills that niche that I love so much, you know, I was like, all right, now I can do, you know, now I can really give it to them and do all the, all the, all the greats, you know, all the great show tunes that I, um, I know and love so much. And uh, basically the set is, it, it, it's all auditions. So they're all songs that I've sung at auditions. And, it, and uh, I, take, I take the audience on the journey of like my very first audition when I was like eight or nine, when I was auditioning for Les Mis. And I totally just What song did you it. sing I, for that uh, audition? Uh, I'm called Little Buttercup. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and everyone else was singing um, Castle on a Cloud from Les Mis. And I didn't know that we had to know Castle on a Cloud, so I freaked out. I was tiny, and, and I, I blanked on the lyrics, and I cried. And, like, it was the worst. I, I had never experienced anything like that. And uh, basically, I feel the same way through every audition. I just feel like I want to cry. I'm so nervous. I can't. And it never goes away, either. You know, all these years, 20, 30, however many years later, <laughs> um, I still get the same crazy nerves. And, uh, and basically, I take people on the journey of like what I learned through all these auditions and like also um, I take them through like the the big wins so like my audition for Hedwig which oh my gosh which is, is we could talk for <laughs> half an hour just on that right yeah I, yeah it's infamous yeah yeah so it's this infamous so I I you know I, t I tell everybody about that audition and for, for um, people watching now can you just give them like the one sentence version of the, there is no one sentence version but I basically went in in character and I wrote my own two and a half minute monologue and presented a kickstarter video campaign to go with the monologue all in character and uh it's now available which is now yeah you can watch time, it on my youtube page. it was just like a rumor that this thing yeah Existed, but no one was allowed to see it. It wasn't available anywhere, but now it's on YouTube. Now it's on YouTube. It's on my page. I, I finally put it up because I was like, all right, I think we're far enough away from, 
you know, the production that I can put it out. And, uh, and the monologue I wrote before it is in the description. So you can read the monologue and watch the video. And kind of, <laughs> it's so silly. It has everything to do. It's yak hair and, like, cats, if you can imagine. <laughs> it's silly things like that that, um, that I, just, I just took from my, what I knew. Mm -hmm. And I just threw it into this kind of character description monologue. So that was obviously one that, that worked. That was you one that on worked, limb, yeah, you, yeah. You had a big win. You ended up being Grammy nominated, yeah. mm -hmm. winning the Tony, um, now doing this acoustic album. Like, and, and Hedwig was with you before that, too. I think it's worth mentioning. Like, it was in your soul already. Yes, of course. I, I saw the show when I was 19 years old. I saw it off-Broadway, and it just changed my life. It changed, it changed my view of what theater could be and could entail. And because the music is so purely rock and roll, um, I... It was the first show I ever saw that had the edge and the, it was this true form of rock and roll, like not watered down, you know, just edgy. And that excited me because I've always been a rock and roller and I just, I didn't think it was possible to do both in both, do both for yeah, at the theater. Same time. Or, yeah. And, uh, and it was the first time I saw that put together on stage and it just, I mean, it totally blew my mind. So you first uh, became uh, in, you, I first became aware of you in a very visible, very televised, lengthy audition. Oh, no <laughs> Legally Blonde, the search for was yeah, I talk about that. Yeah, so oh. that, that was a different kind of audition to do it as part of a reality show. Yes. And, that, and we, we knew you then as Selena Carvajal, and you were re a redhead. A redhead, yeah. Um, I would not even recognize you as the same person. Yeah, I've changed it a lot, but... I'm, it's just hair color. I'm the same person, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, I just changed my name so that it wasn't... But you're um, also auditioning to play this character who's like this, this bubblegum pop poppy, yeah. princess. And, 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 and you're like, you know, <laughs> as, uh, w the way I know you both in person and through your social media is like this motorcycle obsessed, like leather jacket wearing <laughs> badass rock and roller who, you know, like has very little in common with Elle Woods other than I, like the brain. Truth. It, it, thank you. I am smart sometimes. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I like I I. I don't wear pink, you know, at all, um, and and like I'm not like, in t I'm not very materialistic or you know, like just her qualities, her surface qualities mm -hmm. um, are very different than mine. But deep down, we're very similar. You Both know? going for what you want. Exactly. Do you ever think women. about where your career would be right now if you had won that competition? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I I I feel like I would be playing much different roles. I probably wouldn't have gotten Hedwig. Because uh, because they probably wouldn't be able to see it, uh -huh. you know, from that if that was something that I was kind of known for. I remember seeing you in Kinky Boots and going, "That's the girl from <laughs> that's the girl from the <laughs> Elle Woods TV show," <laughs> and now yeah, she has black different. hair. Oh yeah. Um, so um, what what are some other songs that we can see you sing at the Cafe Carlisle in this current show? Dude, I sing "Memory" <laughs> from Cats. From Cats. From Cats, because I started out my career, like my Broadway career, in Cats. And, and I sang for my Cats audition when I, I was 17 years old when I auditioned for Cats um, for the national tour. And, and I didn't know any better, really. So I went in and I sang Dance 10 Looks 3 from a chorus line, which I don't know if you know the song. Uh, it, it's Tits and Ass is the song. And I'm like this gangly little blonde with <laughs> pigtails. I look like I'm 12 years old singing that song. And then I was You were like the pre-surgery yeah, yeah, exactly. version of that song. Yeah, yeah, just like this adorable young uh, <laughs> singing this song. It was very not appropriate, but also great. So, I'm, you know, they, they love that. I sing Losing My Mind, which was also one of the songs that I sang for my Cats audition originally, which is hilarious because it's you know, an old woman who's, who's, you know, just l like lost <laughs> the love of her life. And, well, is, you know, you and I was like right 12 years old. Because you got the part. I got the part. Yeah, I got the part. So um, I, I, I sing that. I, I, I have, there's at the end of the show, I pass out. So I pass out like small versions of my old headshots, <laughs> like about eight of my old headshots. And uh, I pass them all out. And on the back, there's a list of songs and it's called Audition Roulette. And uh, at the end of the show, I allow anyone in the audience to choose a song, and then we just sing it. So it's fun. Cool. Yeah. The one that I've seen referenced the most on social media that people are so excited about is the Bumblebee. Um, oh, a Sleepin' Bee. Sleepin yeah, yeah, from Harold Arlen uh, show. Which I actually was not a song that I knew, but once I saw people referencing it on your, in the comments on your social media, I went and watched Barbara Streisand sing it. Yes, Barbara, What a remarkable yes. song. Barbara, yes. It's a gorgeous song, and um, it's just, you know... Uh, 
I, I heard Barbara Streisand sing it when I was really young, so I had wanted to sing it, of course, my whole life, but uh, my whole life, my, my whole 15 years of life, <laughs> I, wanted to hear, I wanted to sing A Sleeping Bee, and um, it's a beautiful song. It's a soprano song, and that's something that really surprises everyone. Is I, you know, I do the whole belty, you know, sh uh, Broadway thing, yeah. but I also sing soprano. I, I have a legit... <laughs> soprano. Yeah, you can sing opera. I can sing opera. Yeah, I sing "Think of Me" and uh, and I do I do the night aria from uh, from uh, the Magic Flute. I don't know if you guys know that one. That, it's hilarious. It's straight up opera. And it's straight up hilarious. So, will we ever <laughs> see you on a Broadway stage like playing Christine in Phantom? Like, would you would you think about if you were offered that role? Would you take it? I don't know. I I, I don't know if anyone would want to see. That. I'd be a very edgy Christine. <laughs> I mean, you don't. You wouldn't have to be. Like, no, I don't have to be. You can, yeah, you yeah. can sing it. Yeah, you I mean, can be I, delicate when you want to be. I can be. be delicate. Yeah, I used to be a ballerina, of course. Yeah. I could totally do it, and I could be on point and everything because I used to be a trained ballerina. But um, I don't know. I don't know. It would just. It would depend on where I am, kind of placement of career, how long they would want me to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be fun. I could certainly hit the notes. Yeah. Well, and now we can. We know that we've seen. We've seen you do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Billy Porter and Stark Sands recently went back into Kinky Boots. Yeah. Would you ever do that? You know, I I was like, oh my god, why didn't you guys call me? And they were like, well, Annalie couldn't do it. And I was like, oh, it makes sense because they we were the original before, four. Yeah. So it would make sense if Annalie came back and we all came back together. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. But well, maybe the way the two of them did it, the two of you could do it at some other point. Right. I mean, I would probably want to do it for a week because I didn't <laughs> do anything in the you know the part the part in the show is very small. It was right. cut way down. Um, so. I wouldn't do much, but I would do it for the novelty of it. It would be fun. So speaking of auditions, are you still auditioning? I I feel like you should be offer only at this point. Oh, thank you. No, you still have to audition. You know, you have to you get humbled again after you win a Tony Award and you're like, I never have to audition again. I have my Tony Award. This is great. And then, uh, no, you do you you audition mm -hmm. for sure because people need to they need to hear you and see you in in the role. And and also I played such a huge so when I a, a big difference from who I am kind of just normally like I played a man mm -hmm. which it's hard to watch me do that and then be like well, she would be a great Lori in Oklahoma you know so you don't know, have to come in and show them like who I am and how I would do the part um still but you're not going to open calls open no open calls, calls. no yeah. no open calls yeah uh, I also uh, have it on good authority that you have a TV show that you're getting ready to start filming. Yes, I'm very excited. It's uh, for TNT. It's called Snowpiercer. It's based on the movie, which is based on a graphic novel, a French graphic novel. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I play an odd bird. Um, she's right up my alley. Uh, her name is Sayori, and she is the archivist of the train. So essentially, I keep the history books um, and I keep all the history books in my mind. And uh, and so I'm kind of a very, I, I play a very interesting, a very special character. The show will be about class wars on a, on a you know, on this small, um, in this ecosystem that needs to be kind of kept in running order in order for humanity to survive. Because the only survivable place is this train that runs around the world. And so it's like, it's like this, the delicate balance between like the tail of the train and up to the front of the train. And there's all these different classes within the train. And, um, and, uh, and you know, one little thing can cause the entire ecosystem go to go off, off kilter. So it's, uh, it's my, you know, my job to keep everything in balance. It's really an, an awesome show. Jennifer Connelly is starring in it, which I am like so thrilled I get to work with her because I, I'm like a massive fan of like Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a massive yeah. fan of her that other work. She is me. fantastic. Yeah. Like she's a really great actress, but of course Labyrinth is like such a go-to because I'm a huge Bowie fan Yeah, as you're well. going to be pumping her for Bowie stories. Oh yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then David Diggs. Oh um, yeah. He's also starring in it. And so it's really cool because he's, he's a Bay Area guy, you know, right, I'm from San Francisco. He's from Oakland. And, uh, I got to know him during his Tony Awards season. I was always around and, uh, he's a, awesome guy and the rest of the cast is really cool too so it's a you know for it to be my first television show essentially mm -hmm. like i'm like looking at well i mean you were on girls i was on girls <laughs> yes i mean my, my unforgettable first, scene yes oh my unforgettable <laughs> scene but it's my first you know uh uh series regular of course. on a tv I've, show I've, which is like such like a 
a, a, a win. I mean, I'm like thrilled mm -hmm. that this is it. You so know? between that and having just started Bex, um, which it was so fantastic Thank um, as the leading character, are, is theater going to lose you to the cameras? Are you going to come back? Like uh, well, I always have a home in, in, in theater and on Broadway. And unfortunately, there were some other projects that I really wanted to do. But I can't because of filming schedules mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So when it works out, then I, I will always be trying to ping back to Broadway. Because I love Broadway. I love telling stories every night. You know, I love singing my face off for the, the crowds. And when the right project happens at the right time, so it's the right, right, you know, it has to be the right time, right project, then of course, of course I'll come, you know, come back to Broadway. Good. Um, so it just depends on what it is. But I'm not done. Of I, I'll good. never, that, ever. Good. I just, I wanted to make sure that I got you on record saying you weren't moving off to the West Coast and never coming back. No, no, no not never, no. no. <laughs> I'm, for now, um, I'm, I'm focusing on, you know, this new avenue that I have. Right. So well, we have all this TV. new music coming out, new music. Too. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at it. Okay. Good. I just don't want to lose yet. <laughs> uh, let's take a couple of questions from the audience. All right. Cool. Hey, um, so for the Obsessed series, uh, did you uh, contact any of the artists before uh, singing their songs, or are you anticipating what they um, might think of your versions of their songs? No, we did not contact them. In fact, um, they were. So I did this with uh, uh, Shikaboom Records, which is under um, Warner Chapel, and uh, and they were like, just pick your favorite artist. Don't worry about it. You know, we're going to record it, and then we'll tell them afterwards. <laughs> essentially, so we did all these videos and the songs, and we basically told them afterwards that we recorded them. And and the so far, I mean, it's been great feedback. They're all really thrilled. Have you heard I from Elton? It. I apparently I just heard this this morning is that he loved the album like I, I did a morning show this morning and, and they were like so how does it make you feel that Elton John actually personally loves your album I was like I, he does that's great <laughs> you know I don't know um so I'm just hoping that they 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 see it as more of a love letter and as more of like a drive to get people to look more into their music you know um people who wouldn't have necessarily heard their catalog, which is why I do a couple of the really famous songs, is so people are like, oh, I've heard this song before. This is the artist? And then and then I do some deep cuts so that they can get further down into the kind of the depths of this catalog of music that they have. So, you know, it depends on each artist and uh, um, some artists will know that I'm doing this, like will be more aware of it than others, but, uh, but so far so good. And, uh, and I, and I do hope that they see it more as like a love letter to them. Yeah. Your cover of In Your Eyes, the Peter Gabriel song is like, I mean, everyone knows that song. Everyone knows that song. Um, yeah. and that was, and I had that experience you were just talking about where I know that song. That's been one of my favorite songs since I was a little girl, but then the deeper cuts I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was thrilled by that, yeah. by your song choices. Awesome. Awesome. Who else has a question? Um, how you doing? Um, what are some of the your favorite songs off the project, as well as um, how do you bring out your personality in each song? Um, so, well, gosh, I don't. What, well, one of my favorite covers that we did was "Devil's Haircut," which is um, Beck, and uh, Beck, he's not like a singer, singer. You know, he's yeah. A, you were just saying you didn't want to rap, but there's some sort of like talky. <laughs> yeah, well, talky stuff, sure. Um, I really like that cover because it take it. It really it took me out of my comfort zone, and I had to just relax with what we were doing with it. Um, and essentially, I bring in my my own take of each song is is just how vocally I interpret it, um, and then also how my music director would interpret the songs as well. So there's a song, a Radiohead song that we did. Uh, we did Creep, and you know everybody's covered Creep, but this time around we were like, let's do something different with it. So we we like changed the chord progressions and stuff like that. It's a really and. And that one actually came together so fast. Sometimes we would be recording something, and I would be like, no, 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 mm -mm. we can't waste time. This is terrible. We need to change this. <laughs> so we would stop. We would rethink the, the orchestrations and stuff, and then we'd 
we'd do it again, and it was always much, much better. But, um, but yeah, I, I just made sure I stayed instinctual with everything. Like, would I want to listen to it if I was, if, if I wasn't, if it wasn't my project or my voice, like, would I want to listen to it? Would it make me interested in the artist? Would it, you know, is it more, is it original sounding? Like, is it my own take? And, uh, and, and yeah, and is it, is it just fun to listen to or be a part of? So that was kind of the, the process there, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Not. Yeah. And and also wanting um, wanting the original song to really shine through. There were only a few songs that really, really changed up, like really, really famous songs like Creep that's been done so many times. We thought we needed to put our own spin on it. But a lot of different songs just pairing it down to like just guitar or just bass and piano. It brings out the lyrics more. It brings out the melody more so you can hear, you know, the original intent of the song and how it was written. Yeah, that's that. We have time for one more. Hi. 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 So, if you could and take one other Broadway show <laughs> and do a, the obsess, and do the obsessed treatment, which Broadway show? Is? <gasps> what? Oh, that's such a good question too, because it's just endless ideas <laughs> of it. Um, what would I do? Oh God, this is. You know, I would do Jesus Christ Superstar. I know that they're doing that, the live version, yeah. right? Yeah, I auditioned for that. You did? <laughs> I did, I did. I auditioned for it. Um, uh, but uh, I, yeah, I would do Jesus Christ Superstar. It's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite rock, um, uh, rock musicals. And I think it would pare down really well. I love Sondheim a lot. So I would say I would want to do like, I don't know, Sweeney Todd or something, but I don't know if it would be stripped down as well as like something like Jesus Christ Superstar. You could just play it on acoustic well, and it would sound awesome. The contrast wouldn't be as significant. Yeah. The contra yes, the contrast wouldn't be as significant. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe as you go into season two, maybe every season there will be one Broadway show feature. Yes, or one, one Broadway show writer. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, right, because A penman. you're doing artists. Right, I could do yeah. just Sondheim or, or just Jason Robert Brown or just, you know. I'm into it. I'm yeah. here for it. It'll be fun. Uh, where's the best place for people to follow you so that they can get all of the updates as they come along? Well, Instagram's always good. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, that's, Lena Rocker that's Hall. That's basically the only one I do. <laughs> Lena Rocker Hall. Everything just feeds out from Instagram. And then you can go to my website, which is lenahall.com. Or if you want to do all the obsessed stuff, you can go to lenahallobsessed.com. And that's all the obsessed stuff. Everything is out there. It's just, there's lots. You have so much going on. <laughs> I don't know how you managed to get any sleep in this I sleep process. a lot. I sleep okay. a lot. Yeah. Well, I guess having recorded all that stuff in eight days, yeah. now you just Free. let it let it come to us. Well, yeah. we get to continue to consume it. And it every every bit of content you put out is a gift. Oh, uh, and you. it's always so wonderful to have you here. Congratulations yeah, and thank, thank you, you so much, Lena. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thanks, guys. <laughs>